Some of the repetitive behaviors we see, I, I don't think are driven at all by the same things that happen in OCD. So we have people that love their repetitive behaviors. I mean, really get substantial enjoyment about talking about subways or riding on subways or looking out of the corner of their eye. It's often repetitive, but, but there, it is a source, it's a positive source of enjoyment for the child or adult. Um, and I think that there isn't, often we can redirect it without somebody feeling particularly agitated, you know, if they have something else to do. But it is something that they both seek out when they're happy and sometimes when they're upset and sometimes when they're bored. So there's lots of reasons why someone might do it. When we think about OCD, we think about obsessions, mm -hmm. intrusive thoughts, images, or urges that yeah. generate anxiety or distress. And then we think of compulsions, repetitive behaviors, or mental acts that people do over and over again. And it's interesting, in the field of OCD right now, there's a lot of debate. The old model said obsessions drive compulsions. Mm -hmm. So you get anxious or afraid, and your compulsion you're doing to um, reassure yourself, mm -hmm. if you will. You know, there are now a lot of new models where maybe it's where people are positing that the compulsion comes first mm -hmm. and that the obsession is an afterthought or a post hoc rationalization. Mm -hmm. Now, in fact, that model can't explain the full panoply that we mm -hmm. see, but it is true that in many of my OCD patients, there's a tremendous distress and anxiety, um, and, these are, and they feel driven to perform these behaviors over and over again, and, and in general, it's not pleasurable. There absolutely are people with autism who I think have pretty classic OCD. I mean, I knew a young man who absolutely had to stop at certain stoplights, and if he didn't stop at that stoplight, he would go around the block until he stopped at that stoplight, and if he somehow got urged through that light and couldn't go around, he was, it wrecked his day. I mean, he really wanted to go back over there. And there is that element. I mean, the element of wanting to do something over just in the way that you've done, I think isn't, I don't, I don't know how obsessive that is or compulsive because I think people with autism also sometimes miss the point. I mean, they don't understand that if I put a bubble jar here, um, for them to blow bubbles, it doesn't have to be here. It's me that put it, not that the bubble jar belongs here. But there also is a sense of like, I want these things as they were. We have longitudinal research where we've followed children from age two who are up now to 25, kids referred for possible autism. And we've looked at the course of their development and one of the things we predicted was that there would be an association between anxiety and repetitive behaviors. Now we didn't break them up into OCD-like repetitive and others, but we thought that those things might travel together. And actually we found that in fact they don't. You know, they're really separate and there are there is a subset of people with autism who have both, and that is very impairing. So even if you're brilliant and you've really made progress, if you're really anxious and you need to repeat things, then it's really, it, it impairs your life.